Hi, Mr. Olson. Welcome back to Back to Back. Today's topic is Key Concept 1.3, which is the development and interactions of early agricultural, pastoral, and urban societies. All early civilizations were based in large cities, they had coercive governments, and they had really, really complex institutions. The idea of specialization of labor that came from the surplus of the agricultural revolution has become much more complex by about 5,000 years ago. We had really complicated religious hierarchies, political bureaucracies, and armies. Trade is also going to intensify. So both within civilizations themselves and among civilizations, there's much more complex economic relationships. The key group that's going to link trade relationships between the early civilizations are going to, are, is going to be nomadic pastoralists. And when technologies transfer from one civilization to the next, it's often because of those trade relationships led by pastoral groups. In the same area, as the agricultural revolution began, so does civilization itself begin about 5,000 years later. In Mesopotamia, along the Tigris and Euphrates River, the first real civilization emerges. This is called the cradle of civilization. The second early river valley civilization is Egypt, which is of course along the Nile River. In South Asia, along the Indus River Valley, we have the Indus River Valley civilization. They built two large urban centers there called Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Chinese civilization begins along the Yellow River Valley with the Shang Dynasty, about 2600 BCE. And despite the fact that they're completely isolated, civilization also develops in the Americas. The mother civilization, the first civilization in Mesoamerica are the Olmecs. In the Andes Mountains, in modern day Peru, the Chavin developed the first civilization in South America. States are formal political systems that are gonna mobilize those surplus resources that come from specialization. They're usually gonna use coercion and they have the backing of the military. In terms of where they claim their authority, they're most, almost always gonna connect to um, the polytheistic gods in their societies. And they're gonna argue that they have divine connections, whether you're the Pharaoh in Egypt or a Mesopotamian king or a Shang emperor in China, you're gonna argue that your authority is coming from your special connection with the spiritual world. In order to facilitate the rule of these new states, rulers are going to develop legal codes. The first ever legal code in all of history is Hammurabi's code. Hammurabi was a Babylonian king and he codified his rules by about 1750 BCE. Take a look at this engraving that's at the top of Hammurabi's code. It shows Hammurabi on the left receiving the laws from Shamash, who was the god of justice. Clearly, he's trying to create an aura for the people of Mesopotamia that he has authority coming from the gods. You've got to take a look at Hammurabi's code too. It's fascinating to see the concept of justice that emerges. And you're also going to see when you look at these codes that the ideas of patriarchy and social hierarchy are really ingrained because the punishment you had depended on your lot in society. Man, who's that guy? What a history nerd. Hmm. Now, if I had time to brag, I'd talk about how I got to go check out Hammurabi's Code at the Louvre Museum in Paris. But I don't have time to brag. I gotta keep talking about WAP. Thumbs up, huh? That's all I could come up with? Especially in ancient Mesopotamia, as states grow and populations grow, it, competition becomes really, really intense, and we see lots of conflict occurring. We also see, as a result of that conflict, the growth of new technologies. So go way back to key concept 1.1 and we had the stone age where stone weapons and tools dominated. That developed into the bronze age. Bronze is a combination of tin and copper that a lot of the early civilizations used. The Hittites had an advantage because they had access to iron. Iron is a lot stronger than bronze. So when they brought their iron weapons down, they were able to defeat the other existing states in, that, in those territories. When we use the term civilization, we're talking about settled agricultural states. But the semi-nomadic pastoralists who are herding animals out on the grasslands are super important for the development of civilizations. Oftentimes, when civil new technologies are transported, it happens because of interactions and trading and raiding of those nomadic pastoralists on the edges of the settled civilizations. With civilization came the accumulation of wealth, which led people to compete 
for that wealth, which led to violence and warfare and new warfare technologies. An example of new warfare technologies in this period was the composite bow, which was a bow and arrow that blended wood and bone. So it was really, really strong and also flexible. So pastoralists probably invented this technology and are going to spread it to the um, civilized communities. New modes of transportation are going to develop in this period, especially horseback riding, which is going to transform the way that people move around for trade and especially transform the way that they conduct warfare. All early civilizations developed monumental architecture. This is a super important concept. This is an example from ancient Mesopotamia. It's a ziggurat temple. And think about for a second what kind of power you project if you're able to mobilize all the labor and resources required to get this built 5,000 years ago. Even today, states build monumental architecture. Just think about all the monuments in Washington, D.C. The goal is to instill a sense of pride and awe about the power of a state. This dates all the way back to the early River Valley civilizations. Ugh, not you again. Okay, 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 I'll talk about you. I'll talk about you. These are the famous Olmec heads from Mesoamerica, and they're a great example of monumental architecture. They're as big as 11 feet tall and, and weigh as much as 50 tons. Why are they monuments of architecture? Well, we see that the Olmec state was powerful enough to mobilize the resources and labor to get these things built. They're carved out of massive boulders, and there are 17 of them spread all over the Olmec state. What a nice reminder that you're living in the Olmec empire at the time, and you better remember to pay your taxes. Another key feature of the early civilizations is that they developed writing systems. The Mesopotamians developed cuneiform, the Egyptians developed hieroglyphics, the Indus River Valley civilization developed their own writing system too. The only difference is we haven't been able to decipher it yet. Here's an example of a cuneiform. This is a clay tablet from Mesopotamia. Cuneiform is the world's first writing system. It dates back to about 3400 BCE, and it was a way for the government to initially keep records of who paid taxes. In the period of early civilizations, we're going to have new belief systems develop. A great example is the Vedic religion in South Asia that eventually evolved into Hinduism. The ancient Persians developed Zoroastrianism. This is the first monotheistic faith in the entire world. And one of the key concepts that they developed is the idea of dualism, which is the idea of there's a battle happening between good and evil. The idea of one really good, really powerful God and the idea of dualism is something that influences Judaism therefore eventually Christianity and Islam. So Zoroastrianism lays an important foundation. It's also in this period that we see the development of Hebrew monotheism, which is incredibly important in terms of the religious history of the world. Trade also gets much more complex. The Mesopotamians had inter-regional trade with the Indus River Valley civilization. There are some incredible Indus River Valley seals that we found in ancient Mesopotamia. Of course, the Mesopotamians also traded with the Egyptians and even folks from Sub-Saharan Africa. So as societies get more complex, so do their interregional trade relationships. Hierarchy has intensified in this period as states expanded and cities multiplied. Those social hierarchies that began with the agricultural revolution are going to continue to intensify too. Patriarchy is no exception. We've certainly come a long way from the relatively egalitarian hunter-gatherer days when you look at the complex hierarchies that develop in the early civilizations. And that's something that we're going to keep tracing throughout our entire course. There you go, Wappers. Everything you need to know about Key Concept 1.3, the early River Valley Civilization. Thanks for watching Wappers. Ah, not you again!